Okay, so uh, uh, we will begin our fight today. Uh, before the fight, let me introduce uh, our jury. Uh, I'm Wei Wen from Zhongyi University. And from uh, here is the Wu Jiyo Jiao from Zhongyang, Zhongyang And Yao Song and Jiao Sou from Zhongzheng Da Xue. I am doing uh, Hao Wei, Guo Xianhua Jiao Sou from Zhongzheng Da Xue. And the uh, opponent? Uh, so I'm a senator from the Ministry of the Ministry of the Ministry of the Ministry And his Shi Hong Yu, his Wu Yan Yin, his Zhu Yan Yin, his Zhu Han Yin. And the viewer? So uh, we'll start our first round. Uh, so that's uh, for reporter. You have, uh, sorry, for opponent. You have uh, one minute to change the problem. Okay, please write uh, your presenter's name on the platform. Thank you.
So, the way we modeled it was similar to non-uniform temperature changes of similarly supported beams. So the non-uniform expansion of the paper when it's exposed to water is what causes the bending of this um, paper. Additionally, um, because of the surface tension of the water, there are two loads, um, causing the magnetic moment to surface tension. Uh, finally, we'll be focusing on verifying the proportionality of the thickness of the paper to the um, fractional coefficient um, because loads change as time increases. Um, here we've defined our variables. So like I said above, alpha is fractional expansion. Uh, this is similar to the temperature model. However, we're using fractional expansion for the expansion through the water itself. E is the elastic modulus. M is the bending moment acting on the segment. E is the modulus of elasticity on the beam material. I is the modulus of inertia of the cross-sectional area about the neutral axis. And DS is the infinitesimal segment of our plane. Additionally, um, lowercase h is the thickness. So for our model, we use the um, curvature moment um, theorem, which states that um, the radius curvature is equal to EI over M. Then we apply the double integration formula of beam deflection, uh, eventually to get that the angle theta should be proportional to um, alpha over H. We define, uh, we define the constant uh, capital A as alpha over H um, for use in our training parameters. So in our experimental setup, we create a very simple experiment. We have a container, a piece of tracing paper, and water filling the surface below. Um, in regards to the tracing paper, when we place it down, we have to make sure that the tracing paper is parallel to the tramway, or we're first to track the tracing paper curvature properly. In order to do this, we have to place it very gently um, and make sure the water, uh, when we're placing it, does not cause any additional rotation. Um, in order to analyze this curve, we track individual points along the um, paper at different times in order to obtain a uh, shape. Um, in order to analyze this shape, we applied a curve fit um, using our equation that we gained from the um, theory. So, um, when we initially generate the fit, we expect that the angle of curvature should be proportional to, uh, directly proportional to the segment, uh, because our theory explains that the moment of curvature is directly linearly, um, varies linearly as a rate of change, so therefore it should be exponential relationship. And as you can see, this fits the model pretty well. However, if you don't force um, it to be a, a direct linear relationship uh, in terms of the exponential, um, we see that it fits it even better. Um, this indicates that the expansion coefficient it gets reduced as it expands because the water leaves the site, so it contracts slightly. Yeah. Um, if we continue generating the fit, um, there is, yeah, this is just better fits. So if we briefly compare these two fits, we see that at the earlier time and the later, uh, there is a smaller coefficient at the earlier time than at the later time, and this corresponds with our theory because over time, fractional expansion increases. Additionally, if we compare using our original fit versus our last fit, this implies that's a loss mechanism because even though the expansion increases, the um, retention of the expansion um, decreases. So it's still expanding, but it's not as fast as the edges. So bending is less than expected. Um, in order to calculate the fractional expansion, we computed the change in length over the original length. Um, and then if you look at the different thicknesses of the curling paper, we see um, different levels of expansion. Um, additionally, instead of just looking at the boundary conditions for different thicknesses of the paper, we looked at the time it took for the paper to curl and uncurl. Uh, for uh, uh, 0.07 millimeters, 0.11 millimeters, and 0.1 millimeters. Oh, this was all done on a 2x2 square of tracing. 
Um, if we look at our model, we find that um, the absorption should be a logistic function because we are saying that as the water gets absorbed, absorbed, it will eventually reach some saturation point, which corresponds to the logistic function. Um, additionally, the top part of the paper, so we split this into like different sections, should have a should reach the saturation level at a lower point. And if we can figure out what the change in A is, which is our uh, D A, by taking the difference between these two observed curves. So if we take the difference, we see that it should follow this graph. Um, it should follow this trend. And this is the experimental trend, so it matches up pretty well. The first portion simulates the expansion of the paper as a result of absorbing the water. But then as time goes on, the paper starts to control, and the graph, paper gradually stops expanding. Additionally, if we look at the different thicknesses of the paper, um, we see that it takes a longer time to curl as thickness increases, which supports our theory because we're stating that the rigidity of the paper has an impact on the curling rate. Um, this is the curling time for different dimensions of paper instead. Um, as you can see, when it's one to six, it takes a lot, it's a lot faster to curl than the four by six um, ratio. So we concluded that paper curls up due to differential exposure to water, and it uncurls when the paper is fully saturated with water. Additionally, as the length of the side that's curling up increases, the longer the, uh, the it takes longer for curling and uncurling to take place, because due to the larger surface area, the time for absorption increases. Then the thickness of the, uh, the thicker the paper, the slower it takes to curl and uncurl. This is because it takes a longer distance for the water to travel to the top. So it corresponds to longer time to saturate. Then we verify the theoretical proportionality and its modifications using the functions theta is equal to A times S to B. And finally, the thicker the paper, the larger the percentage expansion itself. Okay, thank you. Now it's uh, time for opponents. Question of the turn to page nine. Um, where you stated what your limit is at. What, what's the ground parameters for this experiment? Oh, uh, this was just observing it. So we changed the thicknesses of the paper. Okay. Can, can you turn to page 50? So, what's the length? Uh, okay, never mind. So, uh, okay, let me ask. So, what's the main factor do you think that affects the curl, that causes it to curl? Well, so the reason it curls is due to the um, expansion to the absorption water. Okay, what about uncurling? Uncurling is due to saturation of the water. And how does this process work? So, how does it absorb water? Like from the reaction or from molecular diffusion? Uh, because paper is made from different fibers, um, yes. as the water enters the fibers, the fibers. So, cochlear reaction or molecular diffusion? Molecular diffusion. Molecular. Okay, so um, in your expansion, where you stated that different thickness resulted in different expansions of um, the paper. Um, was it both in an x axis and y axis to expand it uniformly? Uh, could you clarify your question? Uh, so, when, when it's squared, like from 2 centimeters, it ex expanded in x axis of like 0.2 centimeters in x axis and y axis, or only in one axis? It's only one axis. Okay. And um, the one, um, the side axis bands larger. Is the side uh, it depends on the direction of fibers. So for each piece of paper, there is one side that will curl. Okay. Uh, how is the experiment? Um, so so you said that your setup was that you placed the tracing paper in the wire. So you just put it by hand, or was there any contraption that you made? Yeah, we gently lowered it. Okay. And what about the edge effects of the absorption of water? Like, do you think that? So, Pony, you have uh, three minutes to prepare.
opponents may take a vote. So my name is Ryan, and I'm the opponent for this problem, problem of the cholesterol, and I'm from King Protein. So the summary of um, the report. The report uses um, graft, graphene, pork, and surface tension, and an even expansion, non-uniform exposure to water to explain how um, the tracing works. In the experiment, they changed the length of the paper. They also observed that the angle curve and fractional expansion, and they also changed the thickness and width of the paper. So for their data, we got length of paper and time, width of paper and time, and they simulate the angle curve. In conclusion, they said that the, um, the larger the paper, the longer it takes to complete the process of curling and curling. So here are the trends and areas of improvement I have suggested for the report. So they have a really clear phenomenon explanation, clear graph and explanation, model and result comparison, and multiple variables. For areas of improvement, I think that um, the report we worked on is unclear formulas. It was not really um, explained that thoroughly. And um, improvement experiments, because you said that you released the paper by hand. I think that might be some external error in there. They also didn't explain ground sort of parameters of some of the experiments. That's some discussion we'll be talking about. So, so we, okay, so I'll talk about the points of perspective. We're going to talk about the experimental setup, some other parameters that might affect this phenomenon and the conditions of this. So, could we start the discussion? So, could you turn to a problem statement page, please? Okay, so, See that it says that it wraps and curls and then slowly uncurls. Do you think that, um, could you explain why um, the curling time is faster than the uncurling time? Oh, um, so the reason it rapidly uncurls is because as it absorbs water, it initially expands a little faster. Right? Yeah, However, and you can expand it because of the uncurl. Yeah. However, it takes a lot of time for the water to fully saturate, in which it will then uncurl. Uh, could you explain? So the saturation time, it takes longer to saturate than it goes to start curling. Did you measure the time of this? Well, uh, if you go over to...
content. So it's all water in here, right? Yeah. So I think it may have something to do with temperature a little bit more. Uh, yes, I do agree that the temperature would affect the great amount of So um, could you estimate that if we increase the temperature of the water, would it take it longer to curl or shorter? It would so make it uh, faster for it to curl. Faster to curl. Oh. And, okay. Uh, we didn't look at that because we didn't want to um, look, uh, since the temperature of the water would both affect the rate at which it is absorbed, it would also affect the fractional expansion coefficient. So instead, we decided to keep the temperature constant because we're probably looking at what the fractional coefficient is. I think you're okay, so. so, what about auxiliary reaction? So, you think that it takes no part, it plays no role in this phenomenon? So, in order for auxiliary reaction to exist, the orientation of the fibers would have to allow the water to like move in the vertical direction. Yes. However, in our model, we assume that the um, expansion was perpendicular to the fibers, so it should have a smaller amount of auxiliary reaction in proportion to the molecular diffusion system. Mostly sideways. But would you agree that um, auxiliary action kind of starts it? So it kind of controls the reaction. So it kind of starts the process. So um, like auxiliary action causes it to start to curl a little bit. And after it starts to curl, molecular diffusion takes place and that starts to speed. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about surface tension in your experiment? How do you think that affects this phenomenon? If you increase the so if you add some surface things inside, to let the gap gamma value change. Uh, so I think you mentioned that since we're using um, non-uniform temperature change of the surface for the beam, the surface tension kind of acts as a load that um, causes the beam to not expand as fast. If the surface tension is increased, it would slow down the rate of the vessel. So what do you think that if we remove the surface tension? So let's say that we could design an experiment where there's no surface tension. So you could probably be a boil a hot pot of water and let vapor, water vapor access the water surface here. And then there, there won't be any surface tension in this experiment, right? So what do you think will happen? Oh, do you think uh, that the curling would, still... would happen much more rapidly. And uh, could you explain why? Oh, uh, because, so basically the reason why the water actually curls up slowly and has like a section that stays flat it's because of both gravity and surface tension. Yes. Our surface tension is much greater than gravity. So the surface tension is primarily what causes most of it to stay flat as it curls up. However, if we were to reduce surface tension by a lot, then it would curl up at a much faster rate. So then there wouldn't be that big of a flat area, and then the limits between double scroll and single scroll would almost always be single scroll. Could we use the black point? Sure. But so could you estimate the velocity over time of the process?
from the this section to this section, right? You're basically saying that um, the surface tension is keeping the water down. Right? So there should be no movement from here to this time, right? However, as soon as it starts building up, that means the point over here, um, the surface tension is no longer affecting this point. The surface tension will not be at this point, right? Correct. So then there will be no surface tension acting on this. And so we'll only be looking at oh, so the What if we not set this position. point here? So you want it to be like on the to change it into a So how would that be going to draw it out for me? That's this part of the So it would be like this part of the flat until whatever it happens, it starts growing up. However, when it starts growing no, no, okay, so, uh, right, up. Okay, so this is. Okay, so this is where it's at. That was sort of the one point. So absorbing water until it starts curving. So yes. this is the moment it starts curving, and this is the moment it starts uncurling. Yes. So then the moment it starts curling, um, the speed of the vent would start at a much faster rate, and then it should um, decrease. Eventually, it gets to here where it's fully saturated, and then it will start um, curving downwards, uh, uncurling, because it's fully uh, saturated, and in which case the actual curve will cut and could you, could we predict that it'd be lower? So, um, water's bomb value of um, surface tension is around 72. I think it was around this value. So, if we, put it, if we change it to soapy water, what would happen um, in this process? So, so this soapy one is, water would increase the surface tension, right? So, soapy water would increase. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> yes. So, you're talking about material that decreases. Yes. So first of all, primarily for a model, it would impact the time stop at which it starts to uncurl. However, it wouldn't affect the curling itself because we're only looking at fractional expansion for the curving since we don't look at the place that's contact with the water. So let's um, design an experiment. So um, the water surface here is changed in the soap. So this not only affects the absorption rate because it said it was a longer diffusion. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, also, um, the process of uh, surface tension. So, you draw the correct process. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, you said it would decrease the surface tension, right? Yes. So, I it think would, it was around a third of this value. A third of this value? I think that, yeah. So, you draw, let's say here, right, this is where it starts to go like Yes. And then, over here, the velocity at which it would start point curling. It should stay here, but the rate at which the water expands, it should stay faster for longer because of the surface area contacting the water would be greater, so the greater absorption of um, And then I would say for uncurling, um, it should not. Oh, um, because the surface tension should increase the rate at which water is. But let's say that. So it should happen at a faster so it can be controlled the length of the tracing equipment so that it touches. How do you think about the viscosity of the soap water will affect this? So um, there's forces like kind of like sticking. So in water, the forces go out. So what do you think that when we change the soap water? How do you force it? Would, would it increase or decrease? Uh, wouldn't that increase the force? Increase. Because you said it has fire. Oh, wait, you said. Higher or lower surface pressure? Lower. Lower. lower so then it would decrease. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Time's up. So, no problem. We will have one minute to summarize. Okay, so in our discussion, we discussed um, um, why, why the problem statement states that um, it rapidly curls and slowly uncurls. And we discussed that it's about the absorption rate. And so when it needs to start to curl, it just has to have um, different expansion, uneven expansion, and when you want to let it undo, uh, go to a process of uncurling, uncurl, you have to make it uh, fully saturated with water. So that's what we discussed. We also talked about the characteristics of surface tension. So um, surface tension might play probably the most important role in um, our phenomenon here. And we also talked about um, how the curls we change. So in our graph, you can see that um, 
the curvature over time, the speed of curvature, starts at a high point. And it starts to decrease after it starts then. And we also discussed how different um, surface tension problem values will affect the flow. Right. So, so reviewer, take a floor, your question to both reviewer and and point. Okay, so first my question is to both of you. Is uh, because you talked about capillary force and molecular diffusion as the main way. Do you know how to test this, how to um, test between these two forces? Okay. Yeah. So the reaction and molecular diffusion two huge one of the main factors that's different ground limits the temperature. So if we um, increase the temperature of the water, it would increase the uh, molecular diffusion speed much more faster rather than the reaction. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think we would have to use a different material that does not have fibers so we can put in the reaction at that temperature. Okay. And um, can I ask, um, can we turn to page 22? Um, um, what, what do you use for this fitting? Like what function do you use for this fitting? Oh, uh, so in the theoretical model we have the change in... Uh, uh, can I see the formula? Oh. oh. Um, because they use um, an uh, oh, expansion so. called alpha, and how do, how do you think they should test the alpha? Like, the, how do you think there's a way to test the expansion of the paper? Uh, yes, so I think that we could probably soak the entire um, paper in water and compare it with a dry paper to see the amount of okay. it. Uh, so we basically take the formula A times S and we'll be integrating that across the different so sections. Integration to the to the So, do you think that Commission uh, Judge turned back to page 22? So, do you think this is a fun, this, this curvature is a function? Uh, no. So, you don't think it's a function and use a function to fit this? Well, you know, I mean, like, at a position in time, right, we look at the x and y conditions of different points along the curvature. And then we figured out, uh, we integrated the formula we used uh, accounting for the change in the Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, and, and then I want to ask you a question. Is that, do you think the wet level will affect the phenomenon? Or how the wet level, like how the wet the different layers are will affect the phenomenon? Uh, yeah, that's the amount so, of saturation. So do you consider it two layers or many layers? So we looked at an infinitesimal point. It's many different layers. How can we simplify it to two layers? Okay, then what do you think? I, I think it's a lot of um, of layers, oh. and then um, it is higher like um, the water moisture content in there decreases, so it's not okay. just using. And I want to ask you another question: Is that do you think the 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 point where the the, the torque will be formed will be on the paper will okay. always change? Time so. So uh, reviewer, you have to make some repairs. Uh, there you go.
review of, of this team and I'll review the whole uh, dating part. So first, this is the problem statement. And then I'll have an overview on the reporter's presentation. So first, they use short paper and and, and test like the, whether it be one curl or two curl, two curl. And they use the orientation of the fiber effects and, and calculate the torque of the surface tension of the center and, non and talk about the non-uniform exposure to the water. And they're experimented using non-uniform temperature change to simply support the mean. And, and they use uh, parallel dropping and use tracker and Python to uh, stim stimulate and, and see the experiment results. And for the data analysis, they use tracker to track the curling of the, tra of the tracing paper. And for the conclusion, they, when they thought that when the thickness increase, the curling time increases at the larger percent of expansion. And the length of the curling side increases, the curling un uncurling time increases. So for the pros of the, of the reporter, they have clear demonstration of the phenomenon and organize their results and data, and consider various variables in the experiment. But their cons are the lack of quanti uh, quantification of the results and didn't relate theory to the experimental results, and should consider error in several times of the experiment and unclear formula and parameters expa explanation. And for the pros and cons of the opponent, we think the pros are that they consider the way of dropping paper will be optimized, and they have the detailed discussion on how the velocity of the uh, curling paper would affect with different types of surface tension and thickness. But the cons is they have lack of time management and may give more advice to how to optimize the experiment for less error. So now I'm talking about the discussion review. So uh, the first the opponent asked that how do you measure and define the curling time? And the reporter asked that when the paper touches the water, it starts to curl. Which we, we agree that um, we, we should track the whole process and see that when will, when the curvature starts to change and 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 use the curvature to, to know when the paper curls and uncurl. Second, that the opponent asked that how do you separate the stage of uncurl, curling and uncurling? And the reporter answered that focusing on one of the scroll and track the movement, which we think that um, we, the, the answer is, is similar to the first one. Is we, we think looking at the whole process would we'll, we'll have a better understanding of the whole experiment. And this is going to review. Do, do, the opponent asked that increasing the temperature of the water, would it be faster or slower to curl? Which we agree, we agree with the reporter that it's faster because capillary force, because when, when the because when the temperature is higher, the capillary force is uh, the water is easier to get to the top top side of the uh, the whole piece of tracing paper. So we think that uh, the the starting of the uh, the curling will be faster. So we think that the overall speed will be faster. And the next, the opponent asked that if we remove surface tension, what will happen? The curling will act more rapidly, is what the reporter said, which we think that this is correct. Next, that they said, did you analyze the velocity of the curling? And we think that we agree with the opponent here, because we think that velocity should be considered, because this is a part of the experiment. And next, I asked the question is, how do you, how did they test the expansion? Which they think that they're using soap to, to soak the entire piece of paper. And we think that uh, you can also use a microscope to measure the length of the paper fiber before and after the soaking. And next, uh, we asked about the function, which uh, the reporter said it, they didn't use the x and y is not the not function that we they did use. So we think that they should change the axis to make it better fit. Next, we think that uh, both sides of the curling would, um, the I asked that uh, would both sides of the curling affect the phenomenon. We think that the contact force would affect the phenomenon. So we agree with the opponent. And next, I, and lastly, I, I asked a question on how did they test the but whether it is capillary force or bacterial diffusion, which we think that changing surface tension will change capillary force, and the temperature will also change it too. So we think that using these two methods, we can know that is it capillary force or molecular no diffusion. So we agree with the opponent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So now, uh, this is a conclusion remark on the opponent. We have two minutes. She started already. So first of all, we found that molecular diffusion is the primary reason for motion, however capillary actually has a secondary reason. The surface tension primarily affects the load of the beam. Uh, while we agree that surface tension will affect the um, curvature in the double school scenario where they contact each other, we're primarily just looking at the um, change in the curvature as it was curling upwards. Additionally, the ma material matters with the temperature because there will be different rates of fractional expansion along with the different rates of absorption. 
Uh, the fit integrates the rate at which curvature changes to see if at a moment in time, the shape of the paper corresponds to the theory. So if you wanted us to graph out the rate of change of theta, we would, ha we would have to be looking at the angle between the uh, water and the initial uh, the liftoff point. However, we felt that was much more inaccurate, so we instead looked at the overall shape and saw that if that corresponded with the rate of the curvature change. Um, Adding on to this, for a formula, we got t theta equals to rate of fractional expansion divided by thickness from the double integration formula of beam deflection, and we we're primarily just analyzing how the shape matches up to this rate of change. Uh, for the experiment, we made sure the fact that the drop was minimal, so basically we made sure that there was no visible um, torque added onto the paper from the drop to interfere with the tracking, um, and we don't see how um, the drop itself would have an impact on the curling effect because it's primarily from absorption, not from external forces. And finally, the amount of the layers matter, we simplify the qualitative model to make it easy to understand. And that the layers are representation of uh, saturation. Each layer has like a it's an individual expansion. Okay, thanks. Now it's time uh, for a question from the jury.
found in the end format. You have mentioned that the shutter extension is one of the key to determine the diffusion, but you only consider about the water air in and the shutter extension about the water air interface. Do you think the paper uh, paper water and also paper air interface also have the surface tension which determine the diffusion? Uh, I thought we were probably looking at the paper water surface tension the entire time. Um, if you're talking about the other interfaces, um, I don't think that would have a big effect. So, uh, if you decrease the surface tension, I think that it would decrease the speed for it to um, decrease the speed of molecular diffusion. But I think it would. So, when paper starts to curl, it's experiencing surface tension right here, right? So, when you're decreasing this, you could um, increase the velocity for it to start to curl. But I think that, um, so in the process, you're putting in the tracing to run here, right? So, when, from that. Just a question Don't you think that paper, air, and paper, water, surface tension matter? I don't think that matters that much. We haven't considered that variable, but we think it is worth investigating. Okay, so now we'll go to question that says in the Thank you. 